In the previous video, we built our GraphQL server. So you can go into the playground slash API GraphQL in our app and we can execute queries. So we just have this one dummy one right now. Hello, and it says, nice to meet you. So with our Apollo server in place, it's time to go to the front end and build our Apollo client so that we can connect to this from our React app and execute queries and make mutations, etc. So to do that, we're going to close all of this business and we're gonna go into a file called SRC Apollo. So here's where we're going to be declaring our Apollo client and we're gonna import all of these things up here. So you can get rid of the export and we're gonna start by declaring a function called create Apollo client. So much like the name of this function, its goal is to generate a new Apollo client and return it. So we're gonna say return new Apollo client and for an Apollo client to work, it needs two things. It needs something called a link. And a link, um, it basically takes the GraphQL request and it can transform it. It can add headers before it goes out on the internet to a server. And then the last step of the link is always to actually execute the, the uh, HTTP request to the GraphQL server. So our link in this case is just going to be the one of them and it's gonna be the HTTP link whose job it is to go and execute the, uh, the GraphQL request to the server. So for it to work, we need to tell it where our server exists. Ours is in slash API slash GraphQL. And because we're storing our, um, our token for the user, the, the Firebase authenticated user token in a cookie, we wanna say credentials same origin and that will pass up the cookies along with the request so that our backend can receive them and make sure the user is who they say they are. Another thing for an Apollo client to work is a cache. Apollo stores the results of every query in this normalized cache so that if you make the same request over it checks to see if it already has the data you, you're asking for. So we need to create a new instance of our cache which is the in-memory cache like that. And we're going to pass one other option. We're going to configure it a little bit and basically tell it when you execute queries, um, first go and look in the cache, show that right away, but then also go even if you have the data and do another network request so we can get the fresh data. This will basically give us the speed, but also we won't have to deal with stale cache issues where maybe you changed a house so you, you add a different number of bedrooms and you're not seeing old data on your UI. So for this, we say default options, watch query, and we wanna change the fetch policy. And the fetch policy we're going to use, it pops it up, is cache and then network, like I mentioned. Okay, so we have a function to create an Apollo client. How are we actually going to get that instance of the Apollo client? We're going to create a hook called use Apollo like this. And what it's going to do is get that instance of the client. And we could just say um, create Apollo client like this, but then every time you call the hook, it's gonna generate a new Apollo client. We don't want that. So we're gonna wrap this in use memo. And use memo will basically call it the first time, which will generate us a new client and otherwise it will serve us the, the cached version, the memoized version. So what will cause our memoized version to change here? Nothing, so we have no dependencies, so we're just going to put empty uh, brackets like that. So now we're going to return the client. So obviously you could just return here like this, but I like to be explicit. We're creating a client, we're returning the client. It's really easy for the developer to know what's going on. So this is our Apollo client setup, but we haven't yet integrated it with our React application. So for that, we want to go into underscore app. Now remember underscore app is something that's used on every single page. It wraps itself around the page level component and we want Apollo client on every page. So this is where we're going to put our Apollo provider, which will allow us on every single page to execute queries and mutations. So we're gonna uncomment those two, Apollo provider and this new hook use Apollo that we created. 
So the first thing we need is to get the instance of the client. So we're going to say const client is use Apollo like that. And then we can wrap our Apollo provider around here. So it's, it doesn't really matter in our case, whether it lives outside of auth provider or inside. So we'll just put it inside. So Apollo provider would go down here and it's giving us an error because it wants a client or it needs a client to work. So that's what we're going to give it. So now it's happy because it has an instance of the Apollo client with uh, yeah, normalized cache. That was that cache thing I talked about. So at this point, even though we haven't executed any queries, we should have the ability to do that now. What we're going to do for now is just go back here and make sure that it still all works okay. There's no errors. We're not going to do any queries in this video. We are just going to, um, yeah, move on. Cool. That is it. Short video, sweet. In following videos, we're going to execute mutations and queries and whatnot. This was all about just setting up our Apollo client. So that's it. But off the cuff, I'm going to see if I can execute this hello query and display the results. So this is not part of the course. This is me just freestyling. So follow along if you want to. It might give you a really good intro of how to execute queries. So we're going to go just inside of this house, house list and let's try to get it to show nice to meet you. We're going to delete it right after we do it. So don't even worry about that. So we're going to go into our home page. So we have our house list here. Um, so I already did have this import here, use query GQL. You need to uncomment that. We're going to declare our query first. So hello query is going to be GQL where we type our GraphQL. So this is a query and we'll call it the hello query. It's going to execute the field or it's going to ask for hello. That's it. So now what we do inside of our component is we say const is equal to use query. And that would be the hello query. And oops, hell no, please. Okay, so what this is going to give us back is data and whether it's loading. So we don't really care about loading because this is just me messing around, but we're going to look at the data and we're just going to do it really simple. We're going to, inside of a pre tag, we're going to do json.stringify the data null two spaces. So if we come back here to this page, there we go. So when it loads, it executes the query and it returns us nice to meet you. So if you're interested, just this will help you debug things later on if you run into problems. Um, so there's nothing in the console.log, that's good. Network request, I'm limiting it to GraphQL queries. And so if we just reload the page, you should see a request to our GraphQL endpoint. So you can pop open this and you can see um, if we go down to our request payload, you can see that it's sending the hello query to our backend. Um, it's hard to really tell here, but it's executing our GraphQL query. And here is the response. So data is what, what matters. So hello, nice to meet you. It also includes all of this tracing information that isn't really useful to us right now, but the data what's, is what's important. And um, we're showing it on the screen. So I am going to delete all of that because that has nothing to do with this course. Get rid of our hello query. Recomment out this line. And that's actually what we wanted to be at at this point. So we've got the Apollo client. We just tested out our hello query just to make sure that the Apollo client's working. And then we got rid of all of that because it has nothing to do with this app we're building. But now it's time to move on to the rest of the course. 
All right, see you in the next video. Bye.